alone is one of the most grueling competition shows on TV, and anyone who becomes a contestant should be commended for the amount of faith they put into their survival skills. That being said, not every contestant ends up leaving the competition the same way, and many are humbled by their experience on alone. Today we are going to be taking a look at the cocky contestants that thought they could face the wilderness alone, but couldn't even make it through their first day. Josh Chavez, Season 1, 12 Hours First up, we have the Season 1 contestant and the first person to ever tap out of alone, Josh Chavez. Like the rest of the contestants on the show, Josh had to start out cocky. I mean, that's the only way that anyone would ever agree to be alone in the wilderness for an undisclosed amount of time. However, in a lot of Josh's footage and even his casting tape, he seemed like one of the more humble contestants. Josh's problem when it came to competing in this grueling game of survival, however, came when he revealed that he was only out there for fun. This isn't just my basic, I'm gonna go out for a good time. This is some serious stuff. Unlike most of the contestants who were there to win no matter how tough it got. Now, this isn't to take anything away from Josh's journey and the fact that he at least put himself out there to try, but let's be honest. His exit from the show was one that proved maybe he wasn't ready to brave the wilderness alone. According to his personal bio, Josh Chavez considered himself a natural leader. He worked as a law enforcement officer, which he claimed helped him develop and sharpen those skills. When he's not in uniform, though, he's an avid hunter. In Josh's casting tape, he even showed himself stalking a deer and explaining how, by the shaking of the deer's legs... Big over there, I think it's a deer. There he is. See that jitteriness in his leg? He's scared. He could tell that it knew that he was there and was ready to run. He developed his bushcraft and survival skills through a number of wilderness courses, and he fully believed that he was ready to take on the challenge. Little did he know that he would tap out just 12 hours into his survival experience. As you know, each contestant on the show was allowed to select 10 items to bring with them to their destination, which was Vancouver in Josh's case, and with him, Josh chose to bring a 12 by 12 ground sheet, a saw, an axe, his sleeping bag, a 20 meter long stretch of paracord, a two quart pot, 300 yards of filament line with 25 assorted books, a ferro rod, a bow with six arrows, and finally a sleeping bag cover known as bivy bag. Based on that list, you would assume that Josh would have been able to withstand the wild for more than a few hours. So what exactly went wrong? Well. Watching Josh's drop day video, where he explained how he was feeling in the moments leading up to the expedition, you could tell that he was somewhat nervous. He claimed that the longest he had ever been on his own was somewhere in the ballpark of three to four days, which led many viewers to wonder how he possibly planned to outlast the other contestants. Even he had doubts, saying things like, I really don't know how my mind is going to work. In that same interview, Josh continued to talk about how he was going to experience hunger and loneliness which showed that he knew what he was in for. Sadly for him, though, he didn't know just how hard it was going to be. Now, it's important to note that one of Josh Chavez's biggest fears was running into a cougar while on alone. And though he didn't quite get that experience, he got something close enough that it sent him backing in less than 24 hours. As soon as he got dropped off on the island, Josh claimed that seeing the boat leave made him sick to his stomach. I don't even know how to describe it. It is, uh... There's a sick feeling to my stomach. Showing exactly how nervous he was. He described his situation as the type of thing you see on the news where a guy gets lost in the woods. It's the type of thing that you see on the news where a guy gets lost in the woods. Only he was doing it on purpose. His first three goals on day one were to get a shelter set up, get a fire going, and find water that he could boil and drink. And honestly, he was off to a decent start. He made a makeshift shelter pretty quickly and tried to work on a fire. Though that didn't go as planned and never really took off. God's sake. The environment proved too wet for him to start a fire, and when he eventually gave up, he came across something that terrified him even more than a night without heat. Josh found some bear scat near his camp. He immediately became concerned by the presence of large predators in the area, though I'm not sure what he expected. And as much as he detested it, they did not leave him alone. That night, Josh woke up to the sound of something moving outside of his tent and quickly realized that the bears that he saw earlier that day had found him. He called out to scare the large predators. Hey, bear! 
but for fear of becoming their prey, he decided to call it quits. This is something I was doing just for fun, and now that I'm prey, I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. Just six hours into his excursion, Josh Chavez became the first contestant to tap out of the competition. Are you disappointed? Oh yeah, very. I. The bear grabbed me. If somebody see the bear fight, they need to help the bear. Right. <laughs> All right, just got dropped off. Uh, the bush is just crazy. Desmond White, season two, six hours. Next up, we have Desmond White, a contestant from season two who was fully prepared to tackle the wilderness as he made his way out onto the island, but quickly left a man who had been humbled by nature. According to Desmond's personal bio, he was born and raised in southern Arizona and as he grew up, he found that he always had a passion for the outdoors. As a teenager, he and his brother would go fishing along with their cousin for hours at a time, which was when he began learning about all the different types of fish. Desmond was also a Boy Scout, and through that was introduced to new animals, plants, and safety procedures while out in the wilderness. He joined the U.S. Army alongside his cousin, and he dedicated eight years of his life to the service. During this time, he traveled the world and learned all he could about survival while fine-tuning all of his skills. Desmond was able to bring 10 items with him to Vancouver Island, and just by looking at his list, you would have expected him to last longer than just six hours. Desmond's 10 items included a full tang knife, a two-quart pot with a lid, 300 yards of fishing line with 25 assorted hooks, a folding saw, a ferro rod, an axe, a gill net, a sleeping bag, a bivy bag, and lastly, gorp. There were emergency rations that he made to bring with him that consisted of good old raisins and peanuts. And based on that, Desmond probably felt really confident as he approached Vancouver Island. Little did he know that he was about to be thrown right into the den of predators, the likes of which he claims to never have dealt with before. As Desmond landed on the island, as he said, he planned to keep an open mind as to what he should expect. But what he saw near his first campsite shouldn't have surprised him as much as it did. As he walked around, he quickly noticed Bear Scat, and you could tell by the tone in his voice that he immediately grew concerned. Bear Scat, definitely a bear presence here. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I'm a little concerned right now. I'm a little anxious right now. There's nothing wrong with that, though. Any person in their right mind would be concerned if they were in the presence of bears. As Desmond explained to the rescue crew after calling them, he originally planned to just walk around and move his camp away from the bear tracks. However, he couldn't get far enough away. He continued to see signs of bear, and at one point he even thought that one was close by. Feeling vulnerable, Desmond grabbed his can of bear maze that is given to every contestant and slowly backed away from the area before calling in the rescue crew to tap out. His exact words to the crew before officially tapping out were, I ain't made for bears. Y'all can have this shit. I ain't made for bears. I ain't made for them. And I don't think anyone blames him for that. Desmond White officially left the competition only six hours into his first day. Officially tapped. Good. And as he walked off the island, he claimed that he was okay with that. He didn't want to risk his life, and he tried the best he could. My name's Brad, I'm Josh, and we're blacksmiths here in Northern Illinois. Josh and Brad Richardson, season four, day one. For these last two, let's take a look at the two brothers who were the last contestants in a lone history to be extracted within the first day the Richardson brothers. Brad and Josh Richardson were two contestants in the show's fourth season, and this was the first time in the series' history that they had teams of two competing for the grand prize of $500,000. Seven teams of two were scattered across the island, only they weren't placed with their teammate. The gimmick that season was that one teammate would be placed on the island in the traditional method, sort of near where they were supposed to make camp. Meanwhile, their teammate would be placed 10 miles away and have to hike their way to camp. Other than that, though, Alone Season 4 played out pretty much like the rest of the series. According to their personal bios, Brad and Josh Richardson both grew up in northern Illinois, where they spent a lot of their childhood outdoors. Their father would often take both of them fishing and on camping trips, where they would canoe along while learning other useful crafts. According to Josh, they always wanted to experience life in nature the way our forefathers did. And in doing so, they learned to do things like build primitive shelters and start friction fires. All of these traits they thought would transfer well to the competition. Little did they know that it would be a minor injury that would take them both out of the running for $500,000. Like any other season, the Richardson brothers were allowed to bring 10 items with them to the island. 
They chose to bring two saws, a 64-ounce canteen, an axe, a 12 by 12 tarp, fishing line and hooks, a two-quart pot, two bivy bags, and rations. Almost none of which would be necessary. In their situation, Brad was the contestant that was meant to set up camp, while Josh was the one who had to hike 10 miles through the wilderness and wet terrain to get to his brother. During his trek, Josh found himself high up on a ridge, and after slipping on a wet surface, his leg became jammed between two fallen trees or large branches. Just got my foot wedged underneath a log. He tried to get himself free, but instead of pulling his leg out properly, he ended up injuring himself. Now, this didn't mean that he was tapping out right away, and despite the pain, he continued to push forward and slowly made his way down the ridge. That took him more than an hour and a half, though, according to his estimate, and by the time he reached the bottom, he knew he couldn't take it anymore. In the episode, he mentions how something so small can change your entire mindset on the situation. And his minor is twisting an ankle can just change your whole mindset. And that's exactly what happened to him. Josh called to be rescued and effectively ended the competition for both himself and his brother Brad. I don't think I can do this. Brad was clearly upset to be pulled from the game in less than a day. It's disappointing to, uh, to be leaving so early. I definitely had high hopes for this. But when he reunited with his brother, he had a wholesome moment. Yeah. and even let Josh know that the same thing could have very well happened to him. Since their evacuation on day one of Alone, Josh and Brad have been the last contestants to actually tap out within the first 24 hours. Do you think you could handle the harsh environment of Alone? I'm curious to hear how well you think you would do on Vancouver Island, so be sure to leave a comment down below.